Welcome to my talk, App Security Does Not Need to Be Fun. Ignore an OWASP have a terrible time. It's one of those talks where I thought of the name first and then wrote the talk all around it. I think that's the way most good talks work. So I live in Chicago. I've been a developer advocate since about 2016. Uh, I co-host a Security Repo podcast. Look it up. We just got Jason Haddock's episode dropped today. Legendary hacker, former CIO of uh, Ubisoft. Uh, really a pleasure to talk to him. Anyway, find me out there on the internet, MC Dwayne, and I'm happy to chat about anything outside of tech. I love rock and roll. I was just talking about rock and roll before. And uh, some improv and karaoke are also my jam. So hit me up about any of that stuff. Very briefly, I work, oh, not that briefly. I work for a company called Git Guardian. We are a code security platform focused around answering those two questions. Where are my hard-coded secrets throughout my code base? And has my code leaked? We help companies figure that out really quick. I don't know about them. Uh, we'll mention them later because we do sponsor some of this stuff. But I want to start out with asking, you know, what, what does good security look like for our work? I think it actually has an answer. You can have a lot of answers to this, but I think personally it looks like this. We're sleeping at night. We don't have to get up for an alarm at 3 a.m. No one's calling us to come back into the office because something broke or because something got hacked. And it also looks like this, nowhere near Wi-Fi. You can confidently leave cell reception. That's how good your security is. That's how good security looks. And it looks like this, because you're at a concert and you don't have to leave before the, uh, they finish, before the encore. And ultimately it looks like this, we're hanging out with our families, doing what we want to do, playing Monopoly or whatever you want to do with your pastime. But that's the general idea. Good security comes at a human cost. And when we pay that cost technically and correctly, then we get our human time back to ourselves and we don't need to suffer through it. So what does bad security look like? Well, I think it looks a little bit like this. It's isolating. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read anything and then start staring out the window because wow, I don't know who to talk to about this. I've been there. Absence of reason produces monsters, or the sleep of reason produces monsters. One of our famous sketchings in the world. Uh, because we hear about these things like chat GPT or these new CVEs and new vulnerabilities and wow, does that affect me? And now you're imagining all the scenarios where it's gonna be log4j again. And honestly, security is really boring sometimes. Um, if I have to read another 90 page PDF about anything, I'm probably just gonna fall asleep. So Tolstoy said it very well in Anna Karenina, um, all happy families look alike, but all unhappy families are unhappy in their own way. And I think that is true of companies as well. Because, okay, the biggest family of all, everybody running log for shell out there, or log for j uh, and get hit by the CVE. Um, that's a fun name, by the way, CVE 2021 44 22 8. It's very symmetrical. Um, but yeah, hit everybody. Uh, maybe some story you haven't heard about. Um, another unhappy family, Uber. They had a super admin get fished. We got in there. Uh, this is a 19 year old kid from the Lapsus group, got into Uber, found PowerShell scripts full of passwords, and pwned them and taunted them in their own Slack and uh, even taunted Hacker One. They didn't believe him, so he went to the New York Times. That's all we know about the story. Circle CI, anybody affected by this earlier this year? Yep, so you know the story. Um, basically, third party, or as um, an external developer gets hacked, they inject some malware, malware starts stealing credentials, then exfiltrates those credentials, and then they use those credentials to get into customer accounts. Fun fact, a, the same day that they announced this, a independent security researcher said, hey, my honey tokens went off. Something's going on with Circle CI. Within like two hours of this, uh, the, of them making the formal announcement on January 4th. So security is important, but security teams are way outnumbered. Alex Rice said back at Security 2022, it's about 100 to one in your best of organizations. If your organization is smaller than 100, it's probably less than that, but the same general ratio. 
I've seen companies where it's as low as like 10 developers to every one security person. That's a company that's throwing people at the problem. Because in DevSecOps, because we're here to talk about DevOps and GitOps and CD, but DevSecOps says, hey, security should be everywhere. We're gonna shift left, which means we're gonna spread out our security through every stage. That's what shift left was supposed to mean. I have a whole other talk about that, how we kind of misinterpreted that. And this is what a lot of companies interpreted that previous picture to mean. Let's just give everybody a security hat. And now, congratulations, DevOps team, you are now the security team. Congratulations, developer, you're now a security developer. And how do security people spend their days? Well, they spend their days catching up on CVE, uh, after CVE, after NIST. We're just in NIST uh, 2.0, just got released, by the way. Um, and we read PDF after PDF after PDF after PDF after PDF, and we know about all of these threats. And if you're new to security, or even if you've been doing security a while, it feels like you're the Red Queen, or you're Alice chasing the Red Queen, where we have to run twice as fast as we currently are to get anywhere. Run just as fast as you are to stay where you're at. And about now, if you're like, okay, you just told me a bunch of horror stories, Yes, security is on my mind. We're making it worse. Um, I got some good news for you. There's been a group around for 20 years called OWASP that his entire mission is to help you be safe and to help you stay sane out there. Because OWASP is not just a tool, it's a community, the same way that, well, we're a community here at this event. So OWASP.org is an awesome website if you like websites laid out like this. Uh, the original founder of OWASP said in 2021, uh, the problem with the OWASP website is the Byzantine mess. I took that as a personal challenge and I wrote this talk. But their mission is very simple. No more insecure software. This is an impossible journey because it's impossible to make completely 100% foolproof, always secure software because human beings are involved. But we can get closer to it. Actually, their entire mission statement reads like this. That's a lot of words, so I think it boils down to this. We have projects, communities, events, education, training, publications, and resources. Oh. And all of these together make up what OWASP is. So projects are mostly what I'm going to talk about. So the rest of the day, I'm going to break down what is OWASP, how do you navigate it. But then I'm going to end with four actual, you can walk out of this room and start using them. Actually, if you've got your computer open, you can start using them before you leave the room. So first, understand that the basic unit of work, so the basic unit of work in Git is the commit. The basic unit of work in Kubernetes is? What? Yes. Basic unit of work in OWASP is the project. Um, so these are all open source repos run by volunteers, new submissions come in from the community every week. Last count, and this was a few days ago, so it might actually be a bit different now, but 242 total projects in any, any state at all, 155 are in some kind of usable state. So what does that mean? Well, there are basically four big categories. They're constantly messing with this and tuning this, so lab and incubator have now been conglomerated in the last few weeks. But flagships are what we used to know as the, the big ones, the ones they're known for. Last year in October, they said, we should have production projects because enterprises understand the concept of production. As of this last time I checked, which was yesterday, nothing has qualified for production. They set the standard very, very high. So even their flagships aren't quite production projects. Lab projects are on their way to flagship and incubators are newer. Then there's a whole bunch of ones that are not there yet. They need work to even get to incubator status. So we've got 18 flagships. If you're gonna start with uh, OWASP, there's probably where to go, but don't jump over there quite yet. Um, 36 lab projects and 114 incubator projects, and then everything else that adds up that 255 hasn't made it yet. So looking back here, these are like the big ones that kind of span every developer in the world in some way or another. Cyclone DX is on here. That's standard behind, of course, where we get our S-bombs. Um, Juice Shop, which I'll talk about later. Top 10 Zap. Um, and then as we go through labs and go through incubators, we start getting more and more specific to things like API, specific APIs, or specific languages. 
as you roll through it. OWASP also classifies everything as types of projects, not just what category they're under. But so 119 code, 109 code projects, 80 documentation projects for other. What are those other projects? Well, one's a podcast. So they realized a few years ago, this is really a lot to go through from a list view and try to figure out on your own. So they said, what if we mapped everything to the software development lifecycle? Well, we can't map everything. That's a lot of projects. So let's map at least, at least the flagships. So no matter where you are in the software development lifecycle, there's this little map around CRE, Common Requirement Enumeration, that explains what tool you should be looking at. Make it really easy to get started. So this is on the project page. So next time you're in the research phase or the requirements building phase, go look at what they got there. It might help you out. So you might be thinking, well, what's a CRE, like a common requirement enumeration? Well, that's a project unto itself. OpenCRE said there's too many numbers. There's too many things to keep track of. Too many CWEs, CVEs, NIST. There are too many. Let's just combine it into one number, and there you go. So you can go over to that project and check out exactly how all the things map together. OWASP is also a community. And you might be thinking, okay, that's cool with projects and all, but there is an OWASP chapter pretty much everywhere on Earth, including, I believe, Vancouver. I didn't actually look that up before I joined, uh, or before I started talking today. But there's one in Seattle, you know, right down the road. A lot of them went virtual over COVID, of course. There's probably one in your area, and they would love to talk to you. I can tell you, I've been to a lot of the virtual meetups of OWASP, and they're all friendly. People want to help. People really do want you to make secure software. So come with your questions, and they'll always be happy to point you in the right direction. Again, you're not alone. You don't have to stare out the window by yourself. You can go talk to folks. Uh, I mentioned earlier, Git Guardian, we sponsor a couple different chapters around the world, including Paris, and that's the last meetup we had in person in October. The Paris chapter rotates where they hold their meeting every month. They hold events too, just like CDCon or uh, GitOpsCon, and just like, well, as you can imagine, other things. So they have a big global event coming up in DC. Global AppSec comes up in October. There's a bunch of regional ones as well. It's a whole network of events. So if any of this sounds like, hey, I want to hear more about security for applications and get involved in this 20 year old community, show up to their events. They also firmly believe in education. So there's not one section of the website that says education and training, but there's a bunch of education and training scattered throughout. What you're probably gonna be better served by is going to Google or your favorite search engine and saying OWASP education, OWASP training possibilities, starting there, and you'll find a bunch of ways to get there. But there is one I will call out, Secure Flag. Secure Flag is its own entity. They are their own company. They're not run by OWASP. Not directly, anyway. However, if you are an OWASP member, which costs $50 American a year or $500 for your life, uh, for lifetime, um, you can join OWASP and then you get free access to this thing, well, for your entire run of your membership. So what is Secure Flag? It's a giant ongoing Capture the Flag training platform. You wanna go participate in an endless Capture the Flag event? Here it is, as a website. Uh, you can get certifications through it. You can deep dive into just about anything you can think of across the security spectrum. They also make a bunch of resources out there available. This admittedly overlaps with projects quite a bit, and this is where it starts getting confusing. Of like, well, isn't that a resource, or is that a publication, or is that a project? Just assume it's a project. They do print paper books. I've never bought one but they also make them available online for free for the most part. Your mileage may vary. Okay, 15 minutes in, and everybody's probably thinking, okay, you just gave me a bunch of laundry lists and you're, I'm just as lost as when we started. I agree. That's why I'm gonna boil it down to these four things. If you are working in tech at all, which I assume everyone in this room is and everyone watching at home is, then the first one is for you. If you want to start learning more about general security around pretty much any topic and move toward a more secure space, then the first two are for you. If you're building applications and want to see how not to do it, 
or have an example of something you can attack and start like tearing apart to understand how to build insecure software, then the first three are for you. And if you want to actually attack things, if you actually want to go red team, uh, red teaming is the art of pen testing, uh, of actually attacking things and figuring out where the vulnerabilities lay, then all of these are for you. But am I surprised you? you might get to the end and be like, oh, I didn't even know that was a possibility. So let's talk about the top tens first. First off, who is familiar with the OWASP top 10? About half the room. Good. Uh, everyone should be familiar, I believe. OWASP set out a mission years ago to say, what are the most common vulnerabilities people should be paying attention to? Let's compile all that into one easy to manage list. And they did. In 2021, they came out the newest version. They re updated every uh, three to seven years. I'm not making that up. Go look at how often they release. That's how often they have this conversation. Um, and it breaks down all of this in great detail, explains where they got these numbers, what CWEs um, it matches, more very importantly, overview and how to prevent. So if you're thinking, how do I make my application more secure? How can I make the security team like me more? Not that anyone's goal in life is to make the security team like you, but if you want to get on their good side, bring up like, hey, I was reading the top 10 list and I wanna like make our app more secure by adding this feature. I wanna make sure we harden this thing based on what I read in the top 10. They would love to have that conversation with you. I promise you, your security team will love that conversation and they'll help you out. Surprise, there's not just one top 10 list anymore. There used to be, but now there are 17, 13 are in some kind of a usable state. Uh, I say usable state, because some of these are just blank profiles that have nothing there yet. One of the newer ones is one I think everyone in this room should probably be familiar with, or at least should be uh, on your radar now, is the Kubernetes 2022. Uh, there are like four people that work on this. They desperately need more input and help. So if you are a captain, Kubernetes captain out there, or you want to move toward that in your life, this is probably a good way to get some um, something for your resume, is to help have this conversation with them. Um, they have even have a zero for getting started with a thing. But we're not gonna go climb through that today. That's for you to do. Uh, but yeah, mobile security, uh, control F, there we go. Um, CI, CD security, same thing. Uh, insufficient flow control mechanisms, uh, poison pipeline execution, insufficient PBAC. Uh, so yeah, it gets updated from time to time. If your concerns aren't on this list, again, do a pull request. Go have that conversation out in the Slack. Uh, there we go. So that is everyone on Earth should be familiar with at least that. Next up, cheat sheets. You want to sound smart real fast about technology? Cheat sheets are for you. Cheat sheets dot, cheat sheet series dot OWASP org. Pick a topic. There are dozens and dozens and there's a full breakdown on the concept, a bunch of great graphics you can steal, uh, and well, everything you need to know from a high level of how to approach it from a security perspective. So if your CIO ever walks in and says, what do we know about security with Kubernetes? Uh, you can frantically Google this and start reading off facts. If you do that in person, that's gonna be weird, but if you do it on a video call, eh, you sound pretty smart, and you're not gonna be wrong. The goats. Greatest of all time, maybe. Uh, who here is familiar with WebGoat? Cool, we got two, two hands, awesome. OWASP said, hey, what if we built specifically insecure applications that are easy to tell that they're broken? So they started doing that. WebGoat, NodeGoat, wrong secrets is a particular place in my heart because it shows you how not to do secrets management. How to do it wrong, there it is. Uh, Pi goat, chain goat, Laravel goat. Depending on what goat you want. But these all pair of comparison to the true greatest of all time, Juice Shop. I can feel my machine getting warm because it's running in the background. Juice Shop is, well, a juice shop. It is uh, extremely well documented, bug free. It's, they're very proud that it's the bug free application that is completely insecure. Uh, they're on version 14 right now. Uh, this, if you watch another video based on this video, go find this presentation. 
uh, from last year. It is amazing. He walks through what you can do with it because you're thinking, okay, so it's an application. I can go like look at the code. Sure, it's open source. But I'll just give it away. If you go to uh, slash scoreboard, score dash board. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, I put a dash in it for some reason. What's wrong with me? Scoreboard. Scoreboard. Okay. Why? I guess it needed the hashtag on there. Um, anyway, there we go. Score dashboard. I was right. There's also, you can get to it from the side menu. I was trying to URL manipulate and I don't know why. Um, it's hard to type because I'm in a weird angle up here. Anyway, um, what you're looking at is a full-blown training series on how to start attacking websites with full instructions buried in here. That's one of the goals is to find the tutorials and help you along the way. Uh, finding the scoreboard is actually one of the first things, but like you can do things like bully the chat bot. Have any of you ever bullied a chat bot in real life? Do you know that there are people doing that constantly? Yes. If you, once you figure out it's a AI, just keep asking for that discount because it's trained to not let you go unhappy. So eventually we'll give up. Most of them will. That developers you know, want you to be happy as a user. Anyway, uh, you can also run this as a complete capture the flag for your team. Uh, there's full instructions on how to run this on a secure private network. Um, this is an amazingly well-documented project. Again, that video will put you on the right path on how to leverage it for your teams. So we talked about top 10 cheat sheets, zap, uh, goats, and now zap. Zap, the Z attack proxy, the most dangerous thing they make. Who here has ever run zap? Nobody. I talk a lot of security conferences and normally it's more people than that. But uh, Z attack proxy, well, it is an attack tool. It goes through and tries to brute force its way in. It tries to cross site script. It tries to do all sorts of nefarious things. Do not run zap against things you don't own or have explicit permission to use against. One of the things you can own and attack is juice shop. This is fairly new to zap as the HUD mode. So it's a hover over display mode. I don't think the U stands for over, but I don't remember what it stands for. Uh, I'm running out of time. So you can click on things and then go look at, oop, I forgot to make it full screen. And go look and say, all right, here's exactly what just happened. And we can start getting into the details of the alerts on, hey, what's actually wrong with this on this particular page? You can start seeing, oh, I got some warnings here. What's this warning? Uh, medium. Uh, yeah, content security policy header not set. Cross domain misconfiguration. What on earth does that mean? Well, if you go back to this interface, it will start showing you, oh, there's the CVEs specifically tied to that vulnerability. So now you can go start looking at, well, how did they fix it? How should I fix it? How should I approach this? If you're using up-to-date patched software, there's a good chance you won't have to manually do a lot of this. But HUD will very quickly show you where all the flaws are in your applications. And I have about a minute left, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Yeah, again, I'll show you CWE and the, all the other stuff. Cool. So there's that I just showed you. So in conclusion, it's dangerous out there. There's a whole world of people that want you to be safe. Some of them belong to an organization called OWASP, and they'll love to hang out with you. Sleep better at night knowing that your application isn't going to get hacked, at least not with the most common vulnerabilities. People still might get in, but if you can shoo off 80, 90% of attackers because, oh, that vulnerability is closed, I'm just going to move on with my day, you'll sleep better. Start here. Start with the top 10. If you're not familiar with the top 10, just start there and move your way through. And remember, Juice Shop is really fun. I'm Dwayne. I live in Chicago. I've been a developer advocate since about 2016. Find me on the internet at MC Dwayne. And I'm happy to talk about anything outside of tech as well. Any questions before we get kicked off stage? Yeah. Why, why do you think there's not that many people in this room? I mean, 
Is it a matter of security not getting enough? I mean, there's just a handful of rooms in there. I mean, there's, but like there's other rooms that might be more. To me, is it a cultural thing? Is it, or, it, or, or do you have a different view on it? I, I think it's um, a matter of two, two things, honestly. One, um, it's right after lunch on the last day of the conference. That, that actually factors into it, it realistically. Two, um, security, one of my favorite sayings I heard in the last year was, most developers don't think about security last because they're not thinking about security. And I think that's kind of the mindset of a lot of the world of like, well, security is something that gets handled by other people. It will get added into the mix. So for those of all here, I'm really appreciative that you're here and learning about this. The other thing uh, I think factors into it is what on earth is OWASP? Like, sh sure, my talk title is alluring. Obviously, you're here. Um, but that's like the, the unfortunately, the, the silo it's fallen into is like, OWASP is that thing over there that I heard about. That was, excuse the expression, but that was, that was my dad's security org. I'm, I'm all about the new stuff now. What, what, is, what can they offer me? And I think they're a victim a little bit as an organization of, of what the original founder said. They became a Byzantine mess. Like all the projects that are democracy pull in different directions. Like I said, the people working on the Kubernetes top 10, there's like three people. As um, why there are not more people in this room? Well, honestly, there's a lot of really great talks at this thing. And if you're here to further your skills uh, in building GitOps, yeah, maybe in a different room. So. It, yeah, uh, I don't have a good answer there, man, but that's a good question. Anybody else? I'll throw these slides on my Twitter uh, and a Mastodon later today, if you're a Mastodon social person, so MC Dwayne at Mastodon social. And that, I will give up the room, so thank you very much.